Okay, so before we jump into this tutorial, let me just first say, go back and watch my first video. If you haven't seen that first video, this one's not gonna make a lot of sense. So go back and watch that one. So before we jump into the menus, let me mention a couple things that I use with my Fuji X-T3 on a daily that I didn't mention in my last video, but I did leave in the comments. And those things are external monitors. Now the first one that I use is the Phil World MA7. I absolutely love this thing because of its price point. First of all, it's only like $160. Uh, on Amazon, maybe even cheaper now. And this thing gives you things like false color, focus peaking, histograms, um, a lot of things that your camera does have built in, but having the false colors, especially when shooting F-Log, is great. Not only that, but you're able to see yourself when you're recording, and for such a cheap price point, if you're wanting just to get a little bit better image when you're shooting or see your subject or your talent a little bit better, or if you're working with a DP and they want to see the footage as you're filming, uh, this is a great device and it honestly looks really great. It's bright. It even comes with a hood if you're shooting outside. So a good monitor for the price point. The other thing that I'm using right now is the new Ninja V. I did have the bigger one, the Ninja Inferno, before I got the Ninja V. Uh, the only downside to this thing is that it's $700 and it doesn't include a battery or an SSD. So in order to jump into a package like this, it's going to cost you probably around $1,000. But with that said, you're basically getting the best image you can off of your sensor, recording externally. You're not limited on how long you can record um, to the Ninja. And so because SSDs are probably cheaper than SD cards and you're able to record a lot more onto a Ninja, this is just a great tool to have uh, in any filmmaker's bag. Now, with that said, you don't need either of these things to get a great image out of the X-T3. They're just things that make my life easier. So with that said, let's jump into the menus. Okay, so let's jump into the movie settings. First of all, make sure that you have your movie setting icon selected here in the menu. If not, you won't see what I see. Also, make sure on the top left-hand corner of your camera, you have that bad boy slid over into your movie mode. So in my last video, I talked about shooting all eye all the time in DCI. Just a quick, quick rundown real quick. The DCI is that 4096 by 2160, which is a larger image. A lot of people or a lot of cameras only do this 3840 by 2160 um, aspect ratio, which is fine. They call it Ultra HD. Both are great. I just prefer the DCI. I feel like it's less of a crop and it gives me more uh, room to work with in post. Also, I like to shoot all eye. Again, in my last video, I talked about this. In short, all intro is recording every frame. So if you're shooting 24 frames a second, you're getting all 24 frames. If you're shooting 30 frames a second, you're getting all 30 frames. Versus the long gop, uh, it's it's kind of difficult to fully explain, but what it's doing is it's compressing your video file down even further uh, so that you're not getting, you're not overheating your camera or that you're not getting giant uh, files to work with later on. The only problem with that is that the image quality to me is not as good. Also in long gop, what's happening is it's the camera is looking ahead and finding out what pixels it has it needs to or doesn't need to replace and compressing that all down. So again, in my last video, I talked a little more about this. There's tons of blogs and you can go to Reddit and people argue this out. It's fun. It's, it's a good uh, long night read in the verses, all intro versus long op, uh, so forth and so on. So in my last video, I talked about shooting 4K60. The only problem is that when you shoot 4K60, you're forced into this long op. Now you still can shoot in uh, 10 bit internal while you're shooting 4K60, uh, but there is a couple limitations to it. Again, that limitation being that you have to shoot long op. Now, if you want to shoot 4K60 and you want to shoot 10 bit, um, you're going to have to shoot uh, DCI. Like this is the only way that you're gonna be able to get 4K60 uh, DCIs by selecting the 10 bit. But when you drop down into the H.264 um, 8-bit codec, you're being forced back down to 30 frames a second. And so in order to shoot DCI and in order to shoot uh, DCI, you have to shoot this H.265 or the 10-bit codec here, which is completely fine. It's perfect. Now, if you don't want these giant file sizes uh, or you're trying to save card space or you don't want to work with 10-bit, that's completely fine. You can jump down to the H.264 jump over into the 4K60, uh, or the 4K uh, 3840 by 2160, and that's gonna enable you 
to basically uh, shoot the 8-bit codec here. So, and in this codec, you can shoot 8-bit or 10-bit, um, but if you're only wanting to shoot 8-bit, you are forced down to Ultra HD versus if you want to shoot uh, DCI, you're gonna be forced to shoot uh, the 10-bit codec, which is not a problem. Now, I, I do wanna talk about this for a second because for a lot of people, um, they're asking themselves, why do I need to shoot the H.265 or why do I need 10-bit? Um, and I would just say to you uh, that if you're wanting to aggressively grade your footage later on in post, the 10-bit is gonna give you a little bit more room without basically causing banding or image uh, degradation. So for me, I do like to shoot the H.265, but there are times where I do shoot the H.264 because of card space or if I'm at the end of a shoot and I'm trying to pick up B-roll and I know that I have my image um, exposed correctly and I'm not going to grade crazy um, you know, or aggressively in post, then the H.264 is fine. So again, if you want to shoot DCI 4K, you are forced into this H.265 codec. I know I didn't talk about that in my last video and I kind of just said, hey, you're forced into the Ultra HD and you're, you know, and you can't shoot uh, all eye, which is true. You can't shoot all eye. As soon as you come back to all eye, um, it all goes away. So, in order to shoot 4K 60 in this camera, you are going to be shooting uh, the long gop compression. Maybe in an update uh, from Fuji later on, we will get an all eye uh, 4K 60. But like I said, this has been really great. I have no problems with it. If you've seen any of my videos, I've used it. It's great. Okay, so another setting that I didn't talk about in my last video is setting uh, your manual focus from feet to meters. That's found in the toolbar. I feel like that's something that should be in the movie settings, but that's okay, it's in the toolbar. If you're looking for it, this is where it's at. You're gonna go into your user settings, and then you're gonna go over into page two. So let's go screen settings, sorry. And you're gonna go over into page two, and you're gonna focus scale units. You can change this from feet to meters. Um, I work in feet. If you work in meters, that's okay. You can change it there. By default, it comes in meters. Or look at the top of your camera. On the left-hand corner, there's a little circle with a slash through it. That's just basically telling you where your sensor lies. And if you look on the bottom part of your screen, you're gonna see there's some numbers. And as I focus, you're gonna see the little uh, basically slash or hash mark uh, change across that bar and that's basically telling me how many feet I am uh, uh, I am from my subject from that little circle with a slash through it um, or my sensor mark um, to my subject so if I was shooting a movie or if I was shooting some kind of music video and I had markers on the ground I could basically put those down and if I was pulling focus I can just come in here and have these uh, set or preset up uh, to a follow focus knowing where my three feet or my five feet or my seven feet marks were um, I know that's not a very good explana explanation I'm not explaining that or not saying that very well um, but yeah if if you're basically working with manual focus and you know where your talents gonna be you can put markers on the ground and this is just giving you a visual a very linear a linear visual of uh, where those focusing points are to your sensor, relative to your sensor. So I hope I explained that well. If I didn't, uh, just leave, leave a ton of mean comments and I'll ignore them. Just kidding. But hopefully I'm explaining this right. If you Basically, if you're wanting to shoot manual focus and put marks on the ground, or if you're not and you know your distance from your subject or your talent, um, this is going to enable you to see it in feet versus meters or enable you to see it in meters versus feet. This is only this only works on the MK lenses, uh, which is awesome, and it works on the Fuji native glass. If you put a, a cinema lens with an adapter on here that's not native to Fuji, you won't have this available to you. Okay, so another thing somebody asked me in my last video is uh, frame rates rel relative to shutter, and they're asking how do you get that 1 48th of a second. So if you're in your menus and you come down here, you can actually jump in and let's just say we're gonna select 24 frames a second or 24p. Um, again, I would be in all eye all the time, so let's just make good practice. Then you would come over and on the left hand uh, side of your camera on the top dial, uh, you basically have ISO, but then on the right hand side of your camera, you're gonna have shutter. Now, as a general rule of thumb, it's good to uh, have your shutter speed set double your frame rate. So if we're at 24, 
we're gonna want to have our shutter set at 48. So we would just jump our shutter over, turn the dial to 60, and then there's a little dial on the right side of your camera facing you. You can just slide that down to 48 and that's gonna give you uh, your setting or basically your shutter is gonna be double your frame rate. So you're gonna first change the, change the dial on top of your camera and then after that, you're just gonna use the uh, dial that's facing you or to the right of your viewfinder to change that shutter speed there. So you're gonna be able to drop to 48. Again, this is this is relative to whatever frame rates you're shooting. So you're not gonna have your shutter at 48 all the time. If you were shooting, let's say, let's just do another one. You're shooting 30 frames a second or 29.97. You would dr just basically drum this over and you would go back to 60. So 60 is the native on the dial, but then you can basically forward this, the dial on the back of your camera and uh, advance it to 60. So I hope that makes sense. You're basically able to emulate or simulate a true 180 degree uh, shutter angle, which basically comes from that cinematic world. If you don't know what all that is, I would just say pick up a book or read a couple forums and talk about, shut, uh, look up shutter speeds relative to frame rates. Uh, also, there's just a lot of great guys like Philip Bloom, and Philip Bloom's one of my favorite, by the way. Uh, but there's a lot of great guys out there that are really come from that movie world and are using mirrorless cameras and DSLRs now, and they have a lot of great info on how to set up your cameras and get that just cinematic quality um, out of your camera uh, when it wasn't really meant for shooting cinematic movies. So, okay, I hope that helps. I hope that further explained uh, the menu setup and the menu settings I'm using. So again, keep shooting, keep creating like and subscribe and leave comments below and as this evolves or more uh, updates come out i'll keep updating this uh, menu tutorial all right guys thanks